All right, it's time to get started on the brake booster master cylinder. Uh, I'm going to start inside the Jeep and get the pedal assembly and everything taken off first before I get really disgusting. I've already started taking the air box and stuff out so that I can get to you know, the front of the master cylinder easier and have some more room to work. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to replace these two fittings. Um, we'll see though. I'm going to get the new master cylinder and booster mocked up in here first before I bench blade it just to make sure. Um, you know, I need to do that and I've got the new fittings to go on if I do. Some people seem to have a different type of uh, you know adjustment rod right here and a different like it's flat back here where the brake or the brake light switch is. Uh, it looks like it's good this is the correct shape for mine. I'm not sure what year that changed or whatever but it, I think it's gonna be okay. I knew this is gonna be a pain in the butt to get to and they were not exaggerating online the other people that have done this already. This has to come out right here. This little clip. All right, let's start pulling all that apart. Ugh. All right, so on mine, it's a '91. There's just this little clip holding the pedal assembly onto the uh, the stud that's kind of tying the push rod to the pedal assembly. So I just use a screwdriver and pop this clip off. Then I took a little pry bar. And just pop the push rod off of that little stud so I didn't have to undo the brake switch or anything like that. My uh, old Haynes manual here actually has a good a good picture of it so this is what mine looked like because it's the auto. And it's just that little little clip push rod pop it off and it'll come right off. Those bolts are 9 sixteenths a little bit of a pain. All right, I got all those bolts out. Uh, I actually didn't even need to get up under the dash and hold the nuts on the other side. I just kind of would loosen one with the impact and then you know, go around and loosen them all evenly, then I would put pressure on them one way or the other to, uh, you know, keep them, keep those nuts tight and reverse it out of the way. So, got them all out pretty easy. This one on the corner has a, like a little retainer clip on the back of it, so I'm going to have to cut that off, that little retainer clip, so I can get that bolt out. Alright, so I got the booster vacuum line disconnected. Now I'm going to get these brake lines off, assuming I don't strip them. Of course. I might should have loosened these before I unbolted this thing. One half inch and seven sixteenths. And a thirty two millimeter cheater wrench. Yep. Okay. I didn't, as expected, the uh, the master cylinder didn't even drop any fluid because it's so low from doing the brake lines, which is good, no mess. Here's that clip that's stuck on this bolt for some reason. So it looks like they all had a clip, but 
just this one is stuck, so I'll get some dikes and cut that off or whatever. <clears throat> so here's a good comparison of the two. You can see how much bigger the Dave's Customs Master Cylinder is, and you can see how much deeper the booster is since it's dual diaphragm. So looking at the ends of these push rods, looks like it's a match. So I should be okay there. While I have these side by side, I'm going to go ahead and screw this adjustable in to match this one, you know, roughly, so that I don't have that much adjustment that I need to do when I get it in the Jeep. Alright, let me get some nuts on the back of it. These are the little, uh, you know, whatever they're called, flange nuts, serrated flange nuts, whatever they're called, that are holding the booster on from the back, so theoretically, if I can get them all kind of close and held on there, um, you know, I won't, hold, I won't need to hold these with a wrench while I zip the bolts in. So I got it kind of <laughs> propped up, wedged up, and held in place so I can get the the nuts started. Okay, they're all started. Well, my brake lights are on because the pedal is <laughs> all the way on the floor, but I think uh, I got that push rod adjusted almost all the way in, but I think I can make it, uh, I think it's going to work no problem. So there's one that I still need to tighten from the inside, but the other three are no, no problem. All tight. I'll get under there and get that last one. Got it. Done. Alright, I'm going to adjust this push rod out and put it on the brake pedal once the lights go off. First try. Got it. That is a very stiff pedal. <laughs> Now I just need to lock down the jam nut on the back of this push rod and push that boot into the firewall hole. I pulled this little guard off of the old booster and look at how this all this just fell out. Look how trashed this thing is. So, yeah, I'm glad I'm getting a new one. Alright, I'm just going to see if these old fittings will fit into this new one, I'm assuming they will not, but I want to at least try. Hey, wait. What? Okay, that one's going in, no problem. Dude, if this goes in... No, okay. So this one has to be replaced. This one's right. Okay, so just the rear one has to be flared. Well, sweet. That's, you know, half the work. Okay, cool. We get this off and we can bench bleed it. Well, I have uh, 
unexpected problem. So on this master cylinder, the front is the front brakes and the rear is the rear brakes. On the factory master cylinder, the rear is the front brakes and the front is the rear brakes. Man, that's hard to get my head wrapped around. So on the proportioning valve, the rear, this rear fitting is coming down into the rear of this prop valve, which is going out to the two front brakes. The front of this proportioning valve is going straight down to the one outlet, which is going down to the rear brake. So even though this fitting screws right in, it's on the wrong side because this is supposed to be the front and this is actually pushing the rear. And I guess it's a big deal because they have it highlighted. The only thing highlighted on the entire page is this one. Front port on master cylinder goes to front brakes. Rear port on master cylinder goes to rear brakes. So I'm going to have to completely reconfigure those brake lines on the front. And I can't just move the line over because these fittings on the prop valve are different. So I am going to have to unfortunately cut and reflare both of these. Dang it. Alright, so they give you this kit to uh, bench bleed it. It looks pretty cheesy, but I, I guess it'll work for what we're doing here. Alright, so I've removed a few more things here so that I can kind of work on it a little easier. Unplug the brake sensor and I'm going to remove actually remove the sensor now because I'm rebending these lines around trying to reuse the originals but now the one at the back needs to go to the front the one at the front needs to go to the back so I'm trying to get them bent around and you know I can cut them as short as I need to when I reflare them so I'm just trying to get a kind of in the right spot Alright, now I'm going to try to bend these around a little more. I think I might loosen these so I can get this 90 pointed this direction, but I don't know if it's going to interfere with something. So, I don't know. I'm going I'm to play with it a little bit. I'll show you the final result. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it right here and right here. And there's still you know some free play so that it can flex a little bit. Um, uh, it's not too ugly. Once I get it everything on, I don't think it'll be too ugly. It's not. It's definitely not pretty, you know. But it's gonna be okay. If I don't like it or this doesn't work the way I'm thinking, I can just. I mean, what is this? Eight inches that I'm gonna need of three sixteenths for each side. So I don't know. I'll play with it some more and see what we got. Not going back now. Okay, one at a time. This one's the front. Alright, I got the first one done. Uh, it looks it looks okay. I think it's going to be fine. I got to re-bend this around. It wasn't straight enough to, for me to get the fitting on, but it looks like it's going to work. So, that's for the front. I've been doing one at a time, so I don't get them mi mixed up. I'm going to cut this one now so I can do the rear. Okay, it's a nice perpendicular cut. I'm gonna deburr it on the inside and a little bit on the outside. This 
is actually a, a case prep tool for like reloading ammunition, but it works perfect for uh, brake lines too. Do not forget this part, that would suck. First flare. Alright, crank it till it bottoms out. Back it off. Step one done. Step two. It's bottomed out. Two new flared fittings done. So that one's probably in a good spot. I'll have to bend this one a little bit once I get the booster or get the master in here. Well, I went to put the brake sensor back in and it completely annihilated itself. So I just the age of it, I guess. I barely I barely twisted it and it snapped off inside. So I had to get an extractor to get that little plastic piece out. So add that to the list. All right, let's get this sucker bled. Okay, let's put some fluid in it. One. <laughs> Ton of air coming out. All right, I bled this for a while. It seems to be good now. I don't see any more air bubbles in any of the lines or coming out from the bottom of it, so I'm going to get it back on the booster. It's really on there. Okay. Now I can bleed the brakes. Alright, it's in there. I cleaned it up really good with some brake clean and you know went over it a bunch, didn't see any leaks, stomped on the brake pedal a few times, checked it, didn't see any leaks, so I think I'm gonna get the wife in here and uh, get some help bleeding these. All four corners. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not. I don't have one. All right, pump it up. All right, there we go. I uh, got it bled, thanks to my wife and her assistance. 
I checked all these fittings, none of them are leaking anything or wet. Uh, this one on the front was dripping a little bit or had just a, you know like a drop coming out of it. I tightened it up with a wrench just a little bit more like another sixteenth sixteenth of a turn and uh, now it seems to be fine so I'm gonna reassemble all the engine parts, all the intake parts, put the wheels on it and we're gonna go test drive this thing. It was a very 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 tight fit but it's in there now. Um, unfortunately my little fluid level sensor is broken and you can't buy one separately so next time I'm in the junkyard I'll grab one. You don't need it to drive the Jeep though it's not like there's no fluid in this section of the proportioning valve so it doesn't matter. Um, so I'll just have to manually keep an eye on the level but since I just rebuilt it or you know installed that I think it's going to be fine. So let's get the wheels on. Alright, that's it for the brakes. I'm finished with brakes. No more brake fluid, except that I need to bleed them a little bit more because they still feel kind of squishy. But it's definitely it definitely drives way better now. It's got um it's got enough power to lock up the brakes. Uh, like in my driveway going downhill, I can still lock them up. So that's good, but it's still a little squishy. I'd like to bleed them a little better and uh, you know try to get them perfect. But it's better. So that's that's the only thing that really mattered at this point. I'm going to email Dave's Customs and ask them about uh, the way it mounts to the firewall. Between the firewall and uh, the pushrod, there's a gap where the little grommet or the little gasket, whatever you want to call it, can't actually reach the firewall. So there's a, uh, an exposed hole in the firewall there, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do because it doesn't, there's nothing to put over that hole that comes with the kit and that little grommet doesn't stretch far enough to fit it. So I'm going to email them and ask, I know that's a problem some other people have had, um, just doing a quick search, uh, you know, on YouTube and Jeep Forum, I think there was a couple people that talked about it, and I, but I didn't see a resolution. People stopped talking about it, but nobody said what they did or if they did anything. So I'm going to ask them what that is or what I'm supposed to do there. But I can uh, I can make something, you know, go around that little bracket that holds the booster between the booster and the firewall, and I, you know I can wrap something around that like a piece of plastic or a piece of sheet metal or something, and you know make it look neat, and it'll seal out you know 99% of the dust and stuff that comes up from the engine bay. I put the bikini top back on it too, so pretty soon I'm going to change these doors back out for my half doors and my lift shipped. It actually shipped. It's on its way. Uh, I did have to change to standard springs. I had originally ordered the Rock Ready mili double military wrap springs. Those were, I don't even know why they're listed for sale. Nobody has them. Nobody can get them. I don't know if Skyjacker even makes them anymore at this point. So uh, I called Quadratech, who I'd ordered the springs from, canceled that order and ordered a set of, it's the exact same kit, it's still four inches, except it's the standard springs, which do not have the double military wrap. That's the only difference between the two. They're still shot pinged and everything and set in uh, prior to being shipped. So, shouldn't be that big of a deal. A little disappointed, but it was a little bit cheaper, and I'm actually going to get it in time to put it on before Moab, so that's good. Slip Yoke Eliminator hasn't shipped, but that should be shipping within the next couple days, too. That's actually in stock. I had ordered an advanced adapters one, that one's still back ordered, so I switched over and ordered an Alloy USA one, that one is in stock and it's supposed to ship, so anyway, progress is being made, uh, next we'll be actually putting the lift on this thing hopefully, and you know, having some fun with it, hopefully. Took it for a test drive, no leaks anywhere, everything's good, I still need to figure out what I want to do with this sensor that goes in the factory proportioning valve. I might just delete the proportioning valve completely whenever I swap the 8.8 in. That's actually what Dave's, Dave's Customs recommends, so we'll see. Otherwise, it's working fine. 